So four months ago, my grandmother passed away. When my mom received the call that my grandmother had passed, she was on the way to the pharmacy to pick up my dad's prescription. My mom was in line, and she was, when she got the call, she was just stuck. She was in absolute and utter shock, as you can imagine. Her body was completely frozen, and she didn't know what to do. When it was her turn in line to pick up the prescription, the pharmacist noticed my mom's facial expression, and she asked my mom what was wrong. The only thing that my mom could get out was, my mom, my mom, my mom. That's the only thing that my mom was even able to say. And the pharmacist had seen my mom a couple of times coming in and picking up prescriptions for my dad. She wasn't really familiar with my mom, but knew her face. And the pharmacist was able to recognize that my mom was in a state of despair. She saw my mom's facial expression. She read my mom's body language. And without my mom even having to articulate what had just happened, the pharmacist was able to recognize what was going on. So she came from behind the counter and she put her arm around my mom and started consoling her. She was telling my mom that everything was going to be OK and that things were going to get better. And she was just there for my mom at this really vulnerable time when my mom needed someone. The pharmacist was able to recognize from my mom's facial expression and her body language that she was really in need of a shoulder to cry on. This is an excellent example of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is our ability to not only recognize and regulate our own emotions, but recognizing the emotions in others. Emotional intelligence is a trait that we all need and that is beneficial to not only our everyday lives, but workplaces. Emotional intelligence can help us in several different aspects. And some of the most successful leaders are those who are high in emotional intelligence. But there is one huge detriment to emotional intelligence, and that is artificial intelligence. So I know that you guys might be thinking, what does artificial intelligence have to do with emotional intelligence? Well, artificial intelligence is computer systems that were designed to make our lives simpler. So computer systems that are able to perform both complex and simple tasks for us. So artificial intelligence makes our lives simpler, makes workplaces more efficient, and all of us use artificial intelligence in our daily lives, whether we realize it or not. When you're at the gym listening to a song, if you're listening to a streaming service like Pandora or Spotify, artificial intelligence knows what song you like a lot of times before you even hear the song. How many times have you been listening to your streaming service and you hear a song that you've never actually heard before? Well, that's artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence knows what we like before we even like it, as we see with Amazon. Anytime you order something on Amazon, Amazon has a, a laundry list of suggestions that it knows that you will like. So artificial intelligence is able to recognize things sometimes before we even realize it. A really interesting and scary example of artificial intelligence happened over a decade ago when a father in Minneapolis actually realized that his teenage high school 
daughter had received a series of coupons for maternity items. Upon realizing this, the father stormed up to Target, who, was, who had sent the coupons to his daughter, and he demanded to speak with the manager to understand why his teenage daughter had received coupons for maternity items. So the manager himself didn't understand exactly why this individual's daughter had received these coupons, so he said he was going to do an investigation, and a couple days later the manager decided to call the father back to further apologize. When the manager called the father back, the father was rather embarrassed because what he had found out was that his daughter actually was pregnant. So artificial intelligence, the artificial intelligence system at Target was so advanced that it was able to recognize that this girl was pregnant before her father even knew. Artificial intelligence and these algorithms that many of these stores use are so advanced and help our lives to run more easily, help workplaces to be a lot more efficient. Artificial intelligence is able to tell us when someone has stolen our card or has stolen our identity and is using our card fraudulently. Artificial intelligence is able to even recognize your likelihood to commit a crime based on your purchases and your purchase history. So artificial intelligence is something that's here to stay and it's expanding and it's going to continue to expand as the decades go on. But there is that dark side to artificial intelligence. So it's really important that we as people and as a society realize and recognize how to sort of buffer these effects of artificial intelligence because of course it's here to stay. So this is why it's really important for us to learn what emotional intelligence is and figure out how to increase our emotional intelligence. So just to remind you guys, emotional intelligence is our ability to recognize and regulate our own emotions as well as being able to recognize the emotions in other people. So can emotional intelligence be learned? Unlike general intelligence, emotional intelligence is something that anyone can learn and anyone can increase. So I'm going to talk about some ways that each of us can become more emotionally intelligent and increase our emotional intelligence so that we can each become better managers, better leaders, better people, and better members of society. So the first part of increasing our emotional intelligence is being able to regulate our emotions. So when you recognize that you are sad or you're upset or you're angry, you have to first be self-aware and recognize what it is that you're feeling, and then you have to be able to somehow manage the feelings and the emotions that you are experiencing. For me, stress management and managing my emotions is simple because every morning I actually meditate. So before I even pick up my phone, every single morning I try to sit for 20 or 30 minutes and I just close my eyes and I meditate. And what I find that this does for me is it really helps to keep me centered throughout the day. And on the days when I don't get a chance to do this morning meditation, maybe I'm rushing or I'm running out, I find that my day is a little bit off and that things just don't feel completely together. So recognizing what it is that helps you to manage your emotions and regulate your stress is a critical piece of emotional intelligence. So finding outlets for your stress, whether that's listening to music or writing down how you feel, it's really critical to have a way to manage your stress and manage your emotions. Positive thoughts and gratitude. So this seems like something that 
is simple, but for many of us, it can actually be quite a challenge. There is an author named Shad Helmsletter who came out with a book called What We Say When We Talk to Ourselves. And in this book, he discusses many of the negative things that each of us tell ourselves every single day. These negative things that we tell ourselves oftentimes contribute to our negative emotions. So it's important to practice positive self-talk and telling ourselves that things will be okay and encouraging ourselves when we find that we're in a bad mood. So practicing gratitude and practicing positive self-talk is a really critical piece of emotional intelligence. It sounds like it's an oversimplification, but it's really important to analyze some of the things that we are telling ourselves. And if those things are negative, changing the narrative in order to tell ourselves more encouraging things. Empathy. So empathy is a really crucial piece of emotional intelligence. Empathy is our ability to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Empathy can be difficult, especially in the times that we live in now when things feel a little bit more divisive. Empathy is such an important trait to have. Each of us should be able to empathize with what another person is experiencing. Increasing our empathy takes listening. We have to be willing to listen to other people's stories and other people's experiences, even if we don't agree with these experiences or these stories ourselves. It's really important to immerse ourselves in other people's cultures. And this can be done, like I said, by just listening to other people. If someone is expressing their emotions and expressing something that they are going through, even if you don't quite understand what it is that they're experiencing, just listening can help you learn a lot and help you to empathize more with what it is that they are experiencing. So empathy is a really important trait to have. If you want to take time off of work, for example, because you're experiencing some sort of negative emotion, you want a manager or a boss who is able to understand what it is that you need and that you're going through and accommodate you for these emotions that you're experiencing. So empathy in every aspect of our lives is crucial. Increasing our emotional intelligence is going to be a skill that is more and more important as time goes on because like I said, artificial intelligence is something that's here to stay. So as time goes on, our interactions with other people are going to lessen and our interactions with machines are going to increase. Think of when you walk into a grocery store. There are more self-checkout lines than there are people to actually check you out. When you walk into a bank, oftentimes, they steer you toward the ATMs and conducting your business with the machine. McDonald's has even introduced machines in a lot of their restaurants in New York City so you walk into a McDonald's and you don't take your order, you don't give your order to a person, you give your order to a screen. So our interactions with machines will actually increase and this is going to have a negative effect on how we recognize other people's emotions. If you're interacting with machines, machines don't have feelings, machines don't have emotions. So making sure that you are interacting with other people is a critical piece of emotional intelligence. So you may have a job where you work from home or you work on your computer and you don't have to interact with people. But it's important to try to join some sort of group. Maybe if you go on to meetup.com and you interact with other people, 
and so social interactions is something that's really difficult for people, especially who are introverted, because when you're introverted, you may not be as excited to interact with people, but something as simple as giving someone a compliment is a great way to have an interaction, a social interaction. So making sure that you are positioning yourself to be networking and interacting with other people is really important because the more people that you are interacting with, the better able you will be to recognize other people's emotions. And emotional expression. Emotional expression is something that each of us need to do. We know that when we don't express our emotions and don't have an outlet to express our emotions, we keep them bottled up. And what ends up happening, as you guys know, is that at some point they'll end up exploding and we'll end up having an outburst on someone and this can have negative effects on our psyche. So it's really important to make sure that you have an outlet for your emotions and that you recognize when you're feeling negative emotions and a large part of this is being self-aware. So when you feel that you're starting to get angry or when you feel that you're sad or that you're upset, recognizing what it is that you feel, and this goes back to the stress management. So however it is that you manage your stress and manage your emotions is the next piece. So recognizing what it is that you're feeling and then finding a way to manage these emotions and expressing them is a really important part of emotional intelligence. So as artificial intelligence expands and increases, our need for emotional intelligence will also increase. So we have to find ways to interact with other people in order to increase our emotional intelligence and make the world a more pleasant and happy place.